Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your host, Bear Wozniak, and we're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Beautiful day today. I was doing a, I was being interviewed yesterday looking out the window while I was being interviewed, and uh, I saw a, a huge whale breach. Uh, you know, it kind of threw me off. It's that time of year here in, here in Hawaii. It's the cold, brutal time of year when it gets down into the 70s, and the whales are here with their young. So we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our, de- our guest, Dr. Chris Bergwald. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, I'm pleased to tell you that my, my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has been bumping around number five in Christian men's books. So it's getting a really good reception, and we, we're really stoked because we wanted it to reach a lot of men. Uh, women love the book, too, by the way. Uh, and what we're finding is a lot of the men are reading the book uh, with their sons. So it's giving them kind of real traction and having real conversations with their sons. So uh, so I'm going to read a little excerpt from the book, if if you don't mind. Uh, This is from chapter two, All My Heroes Were Cowboys. Cowboys were men who put others first, who rode for the brand, who got the job done come hell or high water. They persevered and kept fighting even when wounded. They were as dangerous as a rattlesnake or a cornered mountain lion. They were not to be taken lightly. Every man's heart comes factory loaded with a call to heroic virtue, to champion a cause that is greater than he is. And so he reaches out to God, to, a, to God who is greater than he is, and he rides high in the saddle of his principles and dreams. He cowboys up. So just a challenge for us men to, uh, to dream big dreams, to know that, uh, you know, the, in, t- in uh, philosophy there's the term talos, which means your purpose your, your, your uh, unique purpose. We know that. I read the Baltimore Catechism when I was a kid. My, my purpose is to know, love, and serve God in this world. But you have a unique call on your life. And the word, the word talos is interesting. If, you, for, if you're a dog, uh, uh, the definition of a good dog is a dog that waves his tail and, and, and is glad to see you when you come in, right? He's, he's fulfilling his purpose. He has a very unique purpose. Well, that's what I think is good. You know, good is, of course, moral virtue, justice, self-mastery, prudence, fortitude, faith, hope, and love. Of course, it's those things. Uh, uh, a purpose to love God back is, is those things, too. But our personal telos, to be really good, is to pursue the, the dream uh, that God gave you, to pursue, pursue the way he, he, ma- he, he made you. He, like, I, like I read, he, if your factory loaded to fulfill a specific purpose, not just a general purpose, but something different. God said, I know what I, hand, I have in store for you, plans for peace. So God has a plan for your life, and our job is to, is to spend some time with God, uh, ruminating on his word, chewing on, chewing on his word, and, uh, and, uh, and, and having that sense of God saying, go do this. Or even, even in the moment when you're in line at Starbucks or something, some, wherever you are socially, God may be giving you a nudge to go talk to someone. So begin to, begin to move in the, in the direction that you sense God is leading you. And you're probably going to be a little bit wrong, but as you start moving, God can direct your path. And, and so today I have a very interesting guest with me. Uh, he's from a place uh, near this town. Have you guys ever heard of Lake Wobegon? It's a town. It's a town where their uh, their their native son is Garrison Keeler, and Chris was raised in Lake Wobegon. So uh, we're going to hear a little bit about that and his his Catholic background, how he came to be the director of discipleship formation for the diocese of Sioux Falls uh, down there in South Dakota. So uh, welcome to the show, Chris. <laughs> hey, Bear. Good to see you. How's how how is everything in Lake Wobegon these days? <laughs> Lake Wobegon, it's really cold up there. Sioux Falls, you know, you're talking, you open the show, it's in the 70s, blah, 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 blah. Hey, we're in the 50s today, Bear. So listen, we're not that far behind Hawaii here in South Dakota. But, but you're wearing a man uh, smock. I don't know what that is. You've got some kind of, it, you only see him in the Midwest. That's, it's a vest. It's a vest. It's got zippers in it and everything. But how, how is everything? What's the news from Lake Wobegon? 
Uh, let's see. I, I, I wish I could get. The, well, no, Garrison probably would sue me if I quoted it. Um, yeah, I, like Wobegon is an interesting place. Uh, the women are something. The men are handsome. The women are good looking, and all the children are well behaved, or something like no, that. No, no, no. All the all the children are above average. Above like, average. Like that's mathematic. It's mathematically impossible, right? That must to do be that. your North Dakota roots coming <laughs> Yeah, nice. yeah. Uh, well, you know, my mom had uh, was from Minnesota. My dad was from North Dakota, but yeah. So actually, you would you were raised in a small town. In Minnesota. For those of you who don't know, Lake Wobegon is this great, uh, I guess it's the prairie home companion that Garrison Keeler, I think he's handed, yeah. out, handed off the reins now, but it's just great uh, little stories and he always ends it. And that's the news from Lake Wobegon where the men are all good looking, the women are, are strong, and the children are all above average. So, uh, so tell us about what it was like being raised in a small town, Minnesota. Yeah, so I, central Minnesota, a couple hours north of uh, the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul. A lot of people, oh, you're from way up north. Well, Canada is still like four hours away from me. So I'm pretty close to the center of Minnesota uh, and just grew up sort of a typical. What was, think, what was the town? What was the town? What's the uh, name? So outside of Cro Crosby, which is near Brave. Oh, so yeah, like, Crosby. Yeah. Yeah, no, oh, well, my. yeah. <laughs> it's so, beautiful up there. It is. Lakes. Um, I, we, I've been in South Dakota for 22 years, but I still miss the lakes and the trees of my, my beloved home state and all lakes all over the place in Minnesota. Uh, grew up, um, loved the small town that we grew up outside of. I'm the oldest of three kids. Um, my dad was a, a, lot, a telephone lineman. Uh, wow. He, my dad he, did some of that stuff when he was young. Did, he really, yeah. did, you, yeah. did your dad fall well, he, off? No, he, no, he, was, cl he was climbing electric poles. Yeah, that um, was climbing telephone poles. And in the winter one year when I was in elementary school, it broke on him because it was so uh, cold out and he broke his leg. It was, it was it pretty, pretty. Now, I know, I know um, people who, some people don't know this beautiful sound that you hear uh, in Minnesota. I'm sure there's other states that have them too. But like in California or in like, uh, we'll hear the coyotes call to each other at night or, or in, in Montana, you can hear the wolves calling to each other. But the loons... Uh, in, in in Minnesota where they it, like there'll be in one lake and then some woods and then on another lake and it's like they call back and forth to each other that long beautiful sound it's so gorgeous it, 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 it is the you know we we, I, we joke that the Minnesota State bird is the mosquito uh, it, is, it, it is it is the mosquito <laughs> <laughs> but in fact it, it's it's the loon and it is a beautiful call I mean lakes all around where I grew up small lakes big lakes um, and I loved going out at night. Um, I mean, I've always loved reading love books, but one of the things I love about where I grew up is you could go out at night and look up and hear the hear the loons and see the Milky Way and sometimes the, the Northern Lights. I mean, just how- Oh neat. yeah, the Northern Lights, man, it's crazy. You can't catch that on a camera. You can't possibly capture. No. Yeah, you got the loons calling. You got the, uh, you got the beautiful uh, uh, moon and, uh, and and the and the uh, the northern lights, and you go oh look at that! But out the whole time you're slapping mosquitoes. Right. <laughs> right, right <laughs> it's not it's not so bad now in the in the cities. They've they've come they've come under control. But I remember. Do you know what it's like to to try to take a to try to put a a, a ball forty feet into a hole and you've got one mosquito after another landing on you. <laughs> Concentrate. Yeah. No, I spent some time in Minnesota. I spent four years there. I was working for Land O'Lakes in their in their in their in their uh, oh, yeah. corporate offices there. Uh, but so so you were so I, and Crosby is just beautiful. Mom, my mom must spent a lot of time in Brainerd. So we spent so we've oh, spent yeah. time and they. So t talk story with us about your about your own background. So you raised uh, you were there were three children in your family. You said or yep. I was the oldest, two younger sisters. Jenny's three years younger than me. Beth is three years after that. Um, so we grew up, uh, dad was raised as a Catholic, um, mom uh, joined the church uh, before they got married, I think, um, and I was born a year or two after they got married, um, and we grew up in terms of our faith, uh, going to church every Sunday, but th th not a lot, I mean, dad being sort of from, uh, so dad's, dad's born in 49, so he's a late boomer, um, and you, you just do this, is, you do this because that's what we do. Uh, and so we were sort of raised the same way. Always went to mass. Did you guys always have the same the, the same seat? Uh, that's a good. You know, I served from second grade to tenth grade. I was an altar server, so I wow. don't remember what the seat was, to be honest. Yeah, that's so good. But, but those in those small town chur churches, you know, you walk in. Hey, why Actually, are these people doing sitting in our our pew? 
That's very true. Uh, actually, left side, left side, like second or third pew back. Come to think of it now, Barry, you're, Only you're jogging. Is, they're holy people. Those people that sit up in the front like that, that's pretty holy people. Uh, man. Well, that way the kids can pay more attention, Barry. That's really yeah, the, yeah, or the, yeah. And I remember back in the day, I don't see them much anymore. There used to be crying rooms where the, the little babies would be. Yeah. But our, you know, you know our, our, our small, this, this was Deerwood, Minnesota, the small um, church, St. Joseph's Deerwood, is where actually we, we went to Mass. Um, and, and they had a cry room, but we, we were never in there. And we were always, almost always, I, I have vague recollections of mom, me being maybe with mom and one of my little sisters. But almost always, my memory is being in the pew. Well, wow, that's, that, that's so cool. You know, and, you know, my wife, Cindy, she loves it when she hears the baby cry or, or the baby sounds during the middle of the homily. Um, of course, when they're screeching at, and they start calling to each other like loons, you know, then it's a little bit more. <laughs> we were at Mass the other day, and there's one baby decided it wasn't very happy and once that one per, uh, piped up the then the other one across the other side of the church piped up eventually they both had to walk out we're, 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 we got to take a break chris we're, we're with with dr chris brugwald we're going to talk more with him about his personal faith journey we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure school of manliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, my publisher asks me to remind you guys of the new book that's come out, uh, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? I, I went on a speaking tour in Montana this uh, this uh, f uh, and, uh, first of November. And uh, in, the, in, in the book tour, uh, it, it was on college campuses. And it was just so amazing to meet so many young people men that were really drawn to this message that they really wanted to be there and find out because a lot of young men haven't really been raised by some of them they haven't had real fathers in their lives and young men really really want to have a challenge so it's a book for men of all ages but what's interesting is i did speak at one uh university there where they where they wanted to shut me down just based on the title of the book uh the feminists at this catholic university uh challenged my even speaking uh the bishop had the uh, uh the priest there read a letter uh saying that he doesn't necessarily agree or or disagree with anything i'm saying but in the interest of free speech they let me speak and they were in the background there just waiting for me to stumble and say something and they found out that uh i was really just challenging men to be virtuous so but the book is the book is gritty and it, it the title is meant to be a bit provocative and so uh please uh please go to uh you know, you can go to Amazon or Sophia Publishing or even to our website, Bear School of Manliness, and 
and order the book. So uh, 12 Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? So we got a real cowboy here today, Dr. Chris Bergwald. He is the uh, Director of Discipleship Formation to the diocese for the Diocese of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So welcome back to the show, Chris. It's good to see you. We had some fun, didn't we? We did. We well, did. <laughs> Well, you had some fun. I don't know if I had fun, but you had fun. Yeah, we were all we we're, we were all picking on each other, kind of like that was great back in the day. But yeah, so um, and and what what is the name of that radio uh, uh, network out there? Yeah, Real Presence Radio in the uh, kind of upper Midwest, Minnesota, the Dakotas, Wyoming, Wisconsin. Yeah, they're doing a great work. So uh, ho- aloha to everyone that's listening on on the Real Presence Radio right now. So then tell us, uh, once you uh, so you you uh, served at the altar. When yeah. you were just young, um, I remember when I learned to be an altar boy, I had to learn Latin, right? Or at least pretend like I read Latin. And then as soon as I became an altar boy, they after like two months, they switched it to English. <laughs> but but yeah, so so tell us about your Catholic upbringing, how, how you grew, grew into a deeper walk with the Lord. Yeah, so we, were, we went to Mass pretty much every Sunday. That was important because that's what we do. And, you know, Bergwald's the last name. It's it's German, Burgwald. It would be how the Germans would pronounce it. So if he follows the rules, you know, we do what we must do. <laughs> um, uh, but, but, but at home, and we prayed before meals. But there wasn't, mom and dad, um, I, I think they did the best that they could. They did do the best they could. They, they, do, they did the best they knew. But there wasn't a, a, a deep, you know, deep, deep um, fostering of, prayer life um, or a deep foster. They made sure that we got to religious ed. I was confirmed in, in the whole nine yards, but just sort of that, like almost just a check the box mentality. Yeah. Uh, and who knows, maybe that was part, that was part of me, but I, I think that's just w- what mom and dad knew to do. Um, so when I went to college, even though I was, you know, all the old, old church ladies at St. Joe's in Deerwood, oh, he's going to be a pre- priest one day. Well, the first weekend I was at college, I didn't go to mass. Uh, it was up to me, and I didn't go. Um, and I I did not, I mean, I, I, on occasion, I might go to, I remember my sophomore year of college, so this was still the case, uh, my sophomore year of college, um, Ash Wednesday, I called at, uh, the the local Newman Center. Hey, this is, the, this, uh, this is at the University of Minnesota. I went from small town, Crosby, down to the U of M, Minneapolis, massive campus. Yeah. I, 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 I wasn't intimidated by it. I enjoyed being there for the time that I was there. Uh, I don't think I got lost in, in, a, in a sense. Um, but that's where I was at. So I called, hey, do we have to go to Mass on Ash Wednesday? I wasn't going to Mass anyway. But is this a holiday of obligation? No. But we welcome for you to be here. Eh, no, thanks. Bye. Mm. Um, so that was kind of me. And and that, that sophomore year, though, is where, so you talked at the beginning of the show about Talos, how we all have that purpose, that goal. Um, and I was just really adrift to bear. I, I was not practicing my faith. I was academically gifted in school, but I was being a lazy slob. Here's, this is the thing for for. 30 years and this is this is this captures the degree to which I was a lazy slob my sophomore year my sophomore year I was in a, a, a house with a couple other friends we had cable TV I didn't have cable TV TV growing up outside of Crosby we had cable TV um, and there was a there was a 12 day period where I watched that Christmas classic die hard 14 times. <laughs> I watched Die Hard 14 times in 12 days. That's an average of you're more a, than you were a la- you're, you're you're like what we call a lazy slob. We- <laughs> <laughs> I don't even so, know why that movie is a Christmas classic. I don't get it. I just don't. Uh, but I well, guess we'll, it is. We'll argue that about some other. Yeah. About some other- yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, that, that just gives you an example of how. I mean, it wasn't like sex, drugs, rock and roll. I didn't get into drinking or drugs or anything. I just was a lazy slob. Yeah. Uh, and so the wheels started to come off. You know, mm. I, I, I got two two Fs my sophomore year. First time I'd gotten less than an A minus in like 15 years. Um, and that prompted a change of major uh, from engineering to political science. But then my, my junior year, um, I had a chance encounter with a couple of campus missionaries, uh, evangelicals. Um, and this was not the first time I'd encountered campus missionaries, but this was the first time, and I know now, Bear, this was the grace of God, his actual grace, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit prompting me. I didn't, I didn't feel it. I didn't hear it, but I know it now looking back. Do you want to get involved in a Bible study, they asked. And by the grace of God and the power of his spirit, I said yes. Um, and that was really the beginning of my, as I, I call, I thought I invented the term revert and reversion, but I was just one of many who used the term because mm. I was raised Catholic, but this was my first like, 
my faith really came alive. Um, it, I think it's a beautiful testimony. Because, excuse me for interrupting, but uh, it, it, it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was raised Catholic, as you were, but I went to a, a Baylor University, a, a Baptist, Southern Baptist University. And man, I've, I met so many wonderful Christians there, and I, and I was one of those people who was just adrift, trying to find, uh, trying to figure out who God really was. I was raised Catholic, but, but I remember when I talked to the Catholic priest at the back of the church about my faith, he talked about Buddha, you know? So we didn't really, you know, so I was kind of adrift, but I saw in them a genuine personal relationship with the Lord and then they love the love of scripture so uh, praise God for our Protestant brothers and sisters and so something in that in that probably salted you made you a little bit thirsty yeah it, yeah I think it did I mean uh, again this wasn't the first encounter but they, they were sincere there were two you know they were my peers college age guys uh, and they they asked if I wanted to and I agreed um, I was on my, I was on my way to the Dinky Dome in Dinky Town, which is just a part of Minneapolis, right by the U. Uh, and I was going to work at Taco Bell that day. So we met the next day after I finished work at Taco Bell, um, and we started this conversation. And the first, <laughs> this is, and I, I, I never had this experience before, uh, but now it's sort of stereotypical. The first question, so the 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 sort of the older of the two, the, the kind of the the the. the the primary evangelist, if you will, missionary, uh, the lead missionary said, so Chris, I'd just like to start every one of these Bible studies with the conversation. So when were you saved? Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I, by the grace of God, I said, well, I did my baptism, which is the right answer. Oh man, you, you, you started off right there, man, with the, yeah. the, the apologetics of the lifetime. So tell, tell us what happened. Well, so so I, we, he said, "Oh, interesting." So we start this. Guy, it was not a Bible study. This was really. It was very gentle. They weren't being manipulative, but it was clear they were trying to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to me as they understood it mm -hmm. to invite me into fellowship with them and with the Lord. Praise God! Um, right. So we're going, and some of this is just like sounding not quite what I was uh, used to. And I, you know, I grew up with, especially Lutherans, uh, lots of Lutherans up there in Minnesota. Yeah, up there by uh, Lake Wobegon. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, so I, it's not like I never met a Protestant before, but this was, and I'd had conversations in high school with friends uh, who were Protestant, but this, in terms of like my personal faith, this was the, a real, this is a kind of first conversation along these lines. And this is what they were saying prompted me to actually pick up the phone and call my, so he's my dentist uh, growing up. He was my deacon growing up and he was my confirmation instructor. Deacon Dr. Phil Meyer uh, was and is his name. I called I called Phil um, and I just said, Phil, uh, Chris Bergwald here. Um, and he knew me, Crossby was a small town, remember me. Uh, and could I explain what happening. And I just wondered, could you recommend anything for me? This is a classic Chris question. What should I read? Um, and so Phil, when you down, you know, after the, the years later, we talk and he's like, Chris Bergwald's call. He's like, wife is Diane, his wife, God rest her soul. Who's that? Chris Bergwald. Chris Bergwald. Mm -hmm. um, because my, again, my faith had never been real deep in, in high school. Uh, but Phil recommended Carl Keating's book, Catholicism and Fundamentalism. Uh, oh, I got to, we, we got to take a break. What's, what's the name of that book again? Catholicism? Catholicism and, and Fundamentalism. And who, Carl Keating. By, oh, by who? Carl, who? Keating. Keating, yeah, I think I have it. I, I think I might have it here in my library. I just, it's been a while. No, um, we're talking with Dr. Chris Bergwald. He is the director of discipleship formation in the Diocese of Sioux Falls. We'll get back to hear more about uh, about his uh, heavy duty uh, apologetics that he had to go, go through right off the bat. This is Bear Wozniak. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy. He 
Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? The world needs a man who will keep his word. You know, don't easily trust a man again who has broken his word to you. But if you give him a second chance, encourage him to be truthful and a man of his word and inspect what you expect. As John Wayne once said, every man deserves a second chance, but keep a strong eye on him. The world needs men right now to be cowboys, to be a man who keeps his word. In fact, a man who is a man of the word, a man who keeps his word and knows God's word. Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics as well as our manly, evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to our YouTube, uh, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure uh, YouTube channel. We have so many things there. We have, uh, but one of the things we're excited about is we're going to be having the, uh, our TV show, Long Ride Home. We have 33 episodes of the TV show up on, on uh, YouTube now. We're just, just kind of opening the door so that you can access it there. You can watch our, our uh, TV show on EW10 and also on uh, Prime Video. It's all up on Prime Video as well. So, But if you go to the Bear Wastick, uh Spirit of Adventure um, YouTube channel and you click subscribe, you're going to get a lot of really cool tools that you can use in your own evangelistic work. We, we post about three of these 60-second shorts uh, every week. Plus, you get the, uh, the this radio show. It comes out as a YouTube also, and uh, and then Cindy and I do our our Spirit of Adventure little uh, uh, podcast, little little moments uh, here in Hawaii or when we're sailing in the in the in the uh, in the Caribbean. We kind of show you the beauty of where we are, and then we talk about the beauty of the Lord. So there's lots and lots of stuff at that uh, at the YouTube channel. So go there and and click subscribe. We'd appreciate it. Our guest today is Dr. Chris Bergwald. Uh, he's the director of discipleship formation for uh, the Diocese of Sioux Falls. So this is really interesting. Because, you know, I'll, I'll tell you something, doc, Doctor. You, were, you mentioned how you went into a, into a into a Bible study, and the first thing they asked you was, "So when were you saved?" I was. I was. We were at the beach in Cocoa Beach, Florida. We were hosting a, a, a tandem surfing contest, and also it's the biggest nonprofit surf contest in the world, the biggest fundraising surf contest in the world. So they say about a quarter of a million people come by that that event over that weekend so um so but there was this this fellowship of sur surfers for christ or something like that there and uh and i heard them say go around and ask people if they've been saved and if they've been saved then you could go to the next person click check that off you know like like as if you know uh as if just ha making a decision for Christ like that is is all you need to do, then you can go live like hell, I guess. And, but we and we but we had our our priest come and uh, the men's group sponsored the our part of the tournament, and uh, and uh, one of the one of the young men said, you know, I, I heard I I mean I don't know doubt if this is true, but I heard that that John Paul II that the Pope gave his life to the Lord on his deathbed. I mean that shows you how great a breach there is, and it's like it's like we're both sides team seem to be hitting, knocking down straw men. We need to come together as Christians, especially in this Amen. day and age. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so then what? So that caused you to call your your deacon, who was your confirmation director. Uh, and so, where where did you go from there? Yeah. So he told me about Carl Keating's book, Catholicism and Fundamentalism. I've always loved to read since I was since I could read. Uh, so I read that book, and I, it very it prompted for me. So ever since then, this is the fall of 1994. Um, and I've, I, in many ways, my, my telos has been to answer the simple three letter question that we ask when we were young children, why? Why do we believe what we believe? Why do we do what we do as Catholics? 
So, you know, and, and, and men, we could say there's all, there's some fun, all, there's all sorts of fundamental questions, but how do we know God exists was a question I wondered about. So these, these evangelicals are asking me questions and Carl Keating is really helpful there, but how do I know that God exists? So the University of Minnesota, a huge public uh, call university, of course had a massive library. Um, and I knew from my world history class at Cross Barrington High School that T Thomas Aquinas was a, a really smart Catholic. So you, de you decided to pick up Aquinas? I decided to pick up Aquinas, man. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, but that's so cool. That's just so cool. So, but I, so I checked out the whole Summa in the, the three volume edition from Benz Benzinger Brothers from the early 20th century. I checked it out and I started reading it and I was thrown off by sort of the the uh, the structure of it, the questions and the the articles and the questions and responses and so on. And but I'm reading at the beginning and and Thomas is using philosophical terminology like substance and accidents. And for me, an accident yeah. is when you trip and fall. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? So oh, he keeps he keeps referring to the to the philosopher. And we, yeah. you, at some point, you figure out he's talking about Aristotle. Yeah, you know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, the, the Summa sat by my bedside bear for a couple oh, of months. Oh, it'll put you to sleep, Chris. It'll put you oh. to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, acquired, it acquired thirty dollars in late fees because I kept wanting to read it and understand it, but I couldn't at that point. Yeah, but but it, well, yeah, well, you kind of need a little bit of uh, mentoring to get into it. But but you, you picked up the chilliest thing there was. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that sort of prompted. So I'm just reading it first. But oh, you know, I, it, it, it was like it. What I think is cool about it is it went over your head. And and a lot of and that'll cause you to rise to go. Well, wait a minute, what was this? You know, this book for beginners is way over my head. You know, so yeah. so that's Catholicism. You know, we've got it we've got the simplicity and we've got the 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 depth of uh, we we have, we have the breadth, the width, the height, the depth, everything. You know, uh, Saint I think it's Saint Gregory the Great said about Scripture, but I think this applies to our faith in general. Scripture is shallow enough for a lamb to wade in, but deep enough for an elephant to drown in. Yeah, uh, and I, I yeah. love that image about our faith, especially if you're a man in Hawaii, uh, me from the lake country of Minnesota, just the image of water and going into the depths with the Lord. Again, you don't have to go all the way, and he, he won't always throw you into the deep end. Sometimes, you know, but he'll, he'll reach down to pick but, you but up. It, but I'll, I'll tell you what, it, it, that's the way I say to Chris, I, I, I loved the time when I was not in the church. I met so many great Christians. Uh, but at some point, I felt I was swimming in the shallow end of the pool. And then I found Catholicism, and it's deep as wide as the ocean. So, Amen. so um, I, go ahead. Yeah, so, it, so I, mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say, so I met with these, I continued to meet with these guys, um, but I was just feeling this tug towards, to really like look to the faith that I was raised in and really sort of give it a chance. Oh. Uh, so I, I went to the confession for the first time. <laughs> that, that was interesting because I, I went to uh, a Jesuit and a bishop house um, and I went to confession the first time, I think for the first time in two or three years. And I learned uh, that all sorts of things that I grew up being taught were sinful, weren't sinful, apparently, supposedly. So that was an interesting experience. Um, Are you saying that they that they uh, they were wrong in what they were say sharing with you? They were wrong when they were yeah. yeah. God bless them. Um, but I, I, re I started returning to the second, I started praying, personal prayer. You know, I learned... Uh, all sorts of, of memorized prayers when I was in second grade. I still remembered them. So I started really praying and, and returning to the sacraments. And I remember, Bear, it was, this was like a month or two. It was December, I think, uh, 94. And I had a conversation on the phone. It was a Sunday morning um, with that, that lead uh, missionary. And he, he kept inviting me to the church, and I kept putting him off. And I said, and finally, this conversation on the phone, um, you know, I just, I, I want to thank you for what you've done. You've really enkindled something in me. Um, but I think I'm going to give the, the Catholic Church a chance. And he paused. He, he's a former Catholic himself. Oh, my goodness. He yeah. paused and he said, Chris, I just want you to know that you're turning your back on God. Yeah. And I, okay, well. But, you know, think about this. Why did he, why did he leave the church? I was being interviewed the other day and someone said, so, uh, so I heard you had you were a fallen away Catholic at one point. I go, no, I was pursuing Christ all the time, but the church fell away from me. The, when I wanted to be catechized, the the people that I encountered didn't have that depth. I finally did return, of course, when I found the great teachings of the church. But but it was almost like um, he, that that young man experienced didn't experience didn't have that encounter, didn't get catechized, and that's why what you do is so important. 
that you're in charge of ca- catechesis because I, I, I would have, I was ready, I was hungry. There was no one there to harvest, harvest that or, or provide that for me. So the church really let me down in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And there's a whole, I mean, you know, all sorts of people that this, the seventies and into the eighties, just mm-hmm. the formation for all sorts of reasons, some of which well intentioned, but just unfortunately it was really lacking in that time period, which is when you were coming of age. So, so I, I, um, I, I sort of wrap up, but I'm really not. I'm going back to Mass. I'm praying. Um, and so this is December, and I decided to drop out of the University of Minnesota. And a young man, well, kind of had a girlfriend, but ended that. And single man, I should discern the priesthood. So my parents, as you can understand, were like, what's going on with their yeah. son? Like, yeah, right. Um, so I remember this is, so I I mentioned uh, Deacon Dr. Dentist Phil already. Well, my, when I came home at Christmas break that winter, my, my, my parents were separated at the time. Uh, and my, they were both, but my mom in particular was really concerned that I was kind of just getting in sort of a, a religious, like go, going off on the religious deep end in some way. So she asked me to go visit um, a surgeon in Crosby, uh, Dr. Paul Severson, who a good man, a great man, um, his one of his kids, one of his, his daughter was friends with one of my sisters, and mom and dad just really thought highly of them as a as a good Catholic family, and mom kind of wanted me to get grounded, so I go over to uh, the Severson house, and I'm talking to Paul, Doctor Severson, but he became Paul, and Paul, Paul's a surgeon, a general surgeon, but. When Paul is passionate about something, I mean, he could sell you anything. Like, he, you just I was just eating it up. And he, he asked me, I don't remember which order it was, but he said, have you ever heard of Dr. Scott Hahnemann? No idea who that is. Oh, my gosh, this guy was a Protestant evangel- or anti-Catholic, blah, blah, blah. Tells me the whole story. Well, have you ever heard of Franciscan University of Steubenville? Nope. Oh, my gosh. Da, 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 da. So I'm over there for three hours. <laughs> I go home, and Mom's like, so how did it go? And I said, I think I'm going to go to school in Ohio. And she wept. She just cried like she's trying to get me grounded. And now I'm going to for from a central Minnesotan is is the East Coast. Ohio is far from the East Coast, but, but it's you you, way you out had east. you had an appointment with God at that Amen. moment because you you that that changed the whole trajectory of your life and then many other people's lives since. And okay, so we're going to talk story. We got one more segment to do. Uh, I I hope we have enough time. We're talking with Dr. Chris Bergwald. He is the director of. Discipleship formation uh, for the Diocese of, of Sioux Falls. We're going to talk about. Uh, he went from uh, the Minnesota Gophers, how, however scary that scary that mascot is, to Steubenville. What's their mascot there? I forget. Is it the Barons? The Barons. Oh, okay. All right. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you. The show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? The dad, the father, 
is like a navigational waypoint or a lighthouse to a child as they grow older and venture out and have bigger and bigger decisions. He sets the standard and sets the course. As the child ventures out in the world that may move further and further away from the true north of the compass setting that their dad set for them in virtue. But as they pull away from that standard, they feel a deep down pull in their soul that they cannot ignore. Are you that lighthouse that brings them back? My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We invite the mama bears out there and everyone to go to our website, Bear School of Manliness. It's a site really for men, but we love the women to go there and uh, they can participate in the first year of, of the program that we have there. Uh, we have just for women on the virtues. But we invite the men to go and uh, check out uh, joining Bear's Man Cave. It's a it's a non-Facebook community, but we have a community of men there uh, that uh, we have, oh, maybe once every two or three weeks we get together for a Zoom meetup. And then you go through our three-year curriculum on manliness, and we go through that together. The men go through, like right now we're on year two, month two uh, of, uh, of, of the School of Manliness, and we're talking about every man has to have a creed and a code he can live by. And we have several videos and audio and written content that the men go through individually, but then we talk story about when we have our Zoom call. But what I'm excited about more than anything is the men are uh, using that school. Their their sons can have a login too. The log the login for the sons is limited. It doesn't let them get into the man cave where we're where we're uh, talking story. You know, like like you would in a Facebook community. But the fathers can go through the school of manliness with their sons. So go to Bear's School of Manliness and check it out. Our guest today is Dr. Chris Bergwald. He's the director of Discipleship Formation for the Diocese of Sioux Falls. So, <clears throat> Steubenville, man. What yeah, a great, so what a great place. The, yeah. I'm going to give you the super quick version of the rest, and then you can ask me questions, Bear. Um, so I go to Steubenville the next fall, um, and just in the priesthood, but really felt called to married life. I met my future wife that first semester. We started in second semester. Uh, so I had an amazing experience. I continue, I, I just... So grateful to God for the experience that I'm so grateful to Father Mike Scanlon, who was the president who really turned uh, Steubenville around in the late 70s and into the 80s. Um, so just really a blessed time there. I finished my undergrad there, um, and then I went to Rome to the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas, or the Angelicum, which is run by the Dominicans. Had you ever read the, did you ever get through the Summa before you went there, or? I didn't get through it, but I, 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 I took enough philosophy and theology at Steubenville to start, okay, this is, this is what I, Thomas... I was waiting for the movie to come out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's so cool. You, got, you, were, you were in Rome. That's so cool. So cool. We were in Rome. So I was in Rome from 97 to 2000. So Jermaine and I got married in the summer of 99. So that December, we, had our, we, we met St. John Paul II who really was transformative for me in that whole journey from afar yes. as my spiritual father, uh, in addition to like Phil and Paul and these other men that I mentioned. Um, so met him and then we were blessed to be able to ins be inside St. Peter's uh, Midnight Mass, Christmas Eve, uh, 1999, for wow. the opening of the, the, the beginning of the Great Jubilee and the opening of the Holy Door. Oh the my Great goodness, wow. That was that was the, my third year in Rome. Is um, when Jermaine and I were together in Rome for our first year of marriage. So, so what a so, blessed time! So, I want to ask you a question here, uh, before we run out of time. Um, 
okay, so now you've been there all through this. Now, if that, what would you say to that gentleman that asked you the question, are you safe? What, what would be your answer to that? This is a really beautiful opportunity to talk story about that. Yeah, so uh, I, I would say I was, I can't remember his John, let's call him John. John, I would say um, I was saved at my baptism. I am being saved right now by the same grace of God that he's given me. And I hope to be saved when it comes to the final moment of my life. And I got that from Dr. Alan Shrek, who teaches at Francis University, or taught, he's just retired at Steubenville as well. But he's got a great little book um, on, on how to talk about our faith with evangelicals. And I, I love that, that the image because it's not a once saved, always saved, but it is acknowledging the power of God's grace as, as long as I cooperate with it. Right. Yeah, it's so beautiful. You know, and I, I should let, I, you know, I, I love Steubenville too. I've taken three uh, online master's degree program courses with them and I have to I can only do it every now and then because I'm usually so busy doing other things but I love Steubenville but yeah because you know people also say um, their big question is well once saved always saved what what do you say to what do you say to that question? Yeah, so it's it's interesting because right now for one of my Lenten uh, spiritual readings is the Book of Hebrews, Bear, uh, and Hebrews is just chalk. In one way, as you're just reading the first few chapters of Hebrews, one of the points of of Hebrews is uh, an encouragement to persevere in the faith and not fall away. Uh, mm -hmm. And he, and 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 the author talks about uh, Christians who have fallen away. So it's really clear in Scripture itself. You can in all sorts of other places. Jesus, Paul, always encouraging us to persevere in the faith. The implication being, you might not. Per it's possible to not persevere and apostatize. So I think it's just. I, I, I think the truth in "Once Saved, Always Saved" is the power of God's grace. But we have to cooperate th with that as well. And it's clear from Scripture as a whole um, that it's possible to fall away. Mm. Yeah, it, it's um, th that there shouldn't be fear in that, uh, but it, it, it's it's there is that there another verse, you know that we we work out our own salvation in fear and trembling. And trembling. Uh, but we yeah. shouldn't see that as as a as being afraid, but we should see it as uh, just to learn to cling cling to the Lord. So um, uh, uh, talk to us a little bit more about. I want to I want to ask you about. Um, uh, well, let me let me just. Can I jump ahead? Yeah. What what do you we need to get men involved in the church? You know, you yeah. when you're doing the what is discipleship formation? What do you do? What do you do in, in that? So way? yeah, I'm, I'm a resource to the priests and the people of the diocese uh, with with the rest of our our great team here in discipleship and evangelization office um, in Sioux Falls. I'm a resource to them for themselves or for their people to help them grow in their own relationship with Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. but also grow in their ability and their comfort level in sharing Jesus Christ with everyone around them by the by the lives they live and by the words that they speak well, that's it, that's my job in a nutshell okay what what can men, what can men do if they they if they they love the lord they want to grow in their faith but they also want to be involved in in teaching com, confirmation or i mean are, are there people lined up outside your door knocking on the door and saying i'd like to volunteer uh, not so much, um, but we. I, I think it's just so recognizing. I, I bear. I think one reason why. Well, there's a few reasons that come to mind why men sometimes are maybe hesitant. One is the common, the fear factor. Like, oh, I don't know enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not holy enough. I'm not smart enough. The Lord's going to give you everything that you need. Yeah, we need to be formed and so on. But trust the people at the parish. Uh, who are going to help you with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not going to throw you in to the deep end uh, without without a life preserver. They're going to give you what you need, but also trust in the Lord. I mean, he he gives us everything that we need for what he asks us to do. And thirdly, what this whether it's whether it's being a confirmation teacher, a religious teacher, catechist, a small group leader, what this is about is telling other people about this person whom we have met named Jesus Christ and how he's changed my life and how he wants to change your life as well. So it's, it's I, I think people overcomplicate both evangelization and catechesis. Yes, there is content that needs to be taught. I've got a doctorate in theology. I, I love the content, but at its heart, it's about a relationship with someone who I know that I want you to know as well. Yeah, you know, it's, it's um, we're, Jesus didn't say, go out to all the world and teach them uh, uh, theology and philosophy. He said, you'll be my witnesses. 
so a witness is just someone that has seen something, who knows something, and so uh, so be a, just be a witness. Just sh- when you when you share with other people, just just l- like you're doing right now, uh, we can see that uh, this man actually knows Jesus. He's enthusiastic about that. So just just your role is your role is to um, be a witness. You don't have to be a great teacher, but I'll tell you what: when you when you do teach. Uh, you you learn so much by teaching. <laughs> You'll learn more than your students in your own personal preparation. And we need men. To, we need uh, me, women are seem to be carrying the carrying the full so much of the weight of educate educating our people. So uh, men get involved. Uh, get involved with your local church in this area of catechesis. So we have about two minutes left. Not even that much. What would be your 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 words to those who are are maybe co- trying trying to consider coming back to the faith? Yeah, well, so um, a couple of things. First of all, Jesus said that if you abide in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So it's in a relationship with Jesus Christ that we find freedom and flourishing. And, I mean, it's it's the bare school of adventure. I mean, it's a rollicking adventure. G.K. Chesterton, who's become one of my favorites, Love him. Uh, talks about how it's it's the adventure of orthodoxy. It's not this state, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here with a bunch of bo- at a desk with a bunch of books, but the life of faith is an adventure with Jesus Christ, where he's changing your life in all sorts of ways, sometimes completely surprising you, sometimes maybe ways that, okay, I kind of knew this would have to happen. But, but to, to, to know that in, in the church, we encounter the Lord who loves us and wants to change, change our lives for the better. Uh, and is there pain sometimes? But yeah, no pain, no gain. It's all for the good of a life lived with him, not just in heaven, but now as well. Hey Amen. We've been talking with Dr. Chris Bergwald. He's the Director of Discipleship Formation for the Diocese of, of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Yeah, it is... It is um, it is about uh, that that personal walk and coming and knowing that God is coming along beside you in your journey. I, my own personal creed is that the most radical quest a person can pursue in life is to abandon themselves to the wild adventure of God's will. Because the cool thing is, when you're in when you're in God's will, you get to see God do stuff. You know, you're moving in His will, and you're thinking this is impossible, and then you see God do stuff. But we got to go, everybody. I just want you to know the the word uh, aloha means uh, to give breath. Ha means to give breath. So aloha means to give breath. So that's why at the end of each of our shows, we always say, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.